In this video, I'll be using SOLIDWORKS to model the trailer hitch using only the pop-ups available in the graphics area. I'll have the command manager turned off and the property manager hidden. In order to keep things short, I'll only be making the ball and then I'll add it into the rest of the assembly, which is pre-made. To start out, I'll press Ctrl N to create a new document and select part as the type. Now for the most part, in this video, I'm using the default SOLIDWORKS settings. The only changes I've made were to add two keyboard shortcuts. The first shortcut is for smart dimensioning, which I'll use the letter D. The second shortcut is used to tile two windows horizontally when looking at multiple files, and that will use the letter H. Next thing I'll do is hide the feature manager, making the graphics area even larger. Now to access the commands, I'll be using the shortcut toolbar, accessible by S. This is customizable by right-clicking, and you can add any commands but I'll just leave it as the default settings since they work pretty good. I'll start out with a revolve protrusion and sketch on the front plane. I'll start the sketch by pushing L to create a line. Then, after drawing the first couple lines, I'll press S again to open the shortcut menu and select a three-point arc. You'll notice the shortcut menu changed now that we're in a sketch. I'll now press L again to start another line, but before placing the line, I'll mouse back over the origin and it will change into a tangent arc and after placing the tangent arc, it will automatically switch back to drawing a line. I'll draw the last two lines to finish off the sketch. Since this sketch is for a revolve protrusion, I want to make an axis of revolution. I'll do this by selecting the middle line and then selecting construction geometry from the pop-up menu. I also want to add a relationship between the center of this arc and the center line. So I'll select the center and the center line and then I'll click make coincident in the pop-up menu. Next, I want to fully dimension the sketch. I'll press D to create a smart dimension and then dimension all the lines and arcs in the sketch. Now that the sketch is fully defined, I can finish the sketch using the confirmation corner. I'll accept that SOLIDWORKS will automatically close the sketch for me and then press enter to create the revolve protrusion. Next, I want to create a cutout on the bottom face of the ball. Cutout is also available in the shortcut menu. After selecting cutout and then orienting the view towards the bottom face, I can then start my sketch. By converting the outer edge of the circle, I can include it in my sketch. Next, I'll use L to create two lines, which are vertical and coincident with the outer edge of the circle. I would also like both lines to be equal and be centered on the origin. So I'll collect both lines and then in the pop-up menu select make equal. Then by pressing D I can add a dimension between them to control how far apart they are. Again from the shortcut menu I'll select the power trim tool to trim the top and bottom sections of the circle. Then I'll exit the sketch. I want the cut to go through the next section of the model, so I'll right click and select up to next as the end condition, thereby making the cut go through the bottom half but not the top half of the ball. So now I want to add some fillets in order to smooth out the part. I'll select fillets from the shortcut menu and then select the edge around the top of the ball to add a 0.1 inch fillet. I want to also add some fillets to the bottom, so I'll right click and select recent commands and then choose fillet. I'll add these fillets to these corners but I also want them to be a little bit bigger than the fillets on the top. So I can select the dimension in this balloon and change it to 0.2 inches, then hit the check mark to accept. The part is almost finished. We only have to add the bolt coming out of the bottom. By selecting the bottom face, there's an option to sketch in the pop-up toolbar. After doing that, I'll select center point circle from the shortcuts toolbar and add a circle. Then using D, I'll dimension it. I'll exit the sketch and while it's still selected, select Extrusion from the Shortcuts toolbar. Then, I'll use Instant 3D and the ruler to drag it out to the dimension I want. I'll accept the extrusion using Confirmation Corner, thus completing the part. In order to save it, I'll use the keyboard shortcut Control s Then, after typing in the name of the part, I'll push Enter to save. Now I'll put the part in an isometric view to make it easier for access later. By pressing Ctrl O, I can open the hitch assembly which I'm going to be putting the ball into. 
Now that the hitch is open, I'll hide the feature manager tree and then push H to tile the windows horizontally. It's then a simple drag and drop to bring the ball into the hitch assembly. In order to put the threaded shaft in the hole, I'll alt drag to enable smart mating, which will automatically add a concentric mate. For the next mate, I'll right click on the top face of the hitch and select mate. Then for the other part of the mate, I'll select the bottom face of the ball. To align the ball with the hitch, I'll be using the width mate. In order to make it easier to select, I'll align it basically just by dragging. Now I'll select the two side faces of the ball and the two side faces of the hitch. Then in the pop-up menu, I'll select mate. The automatic choice is the width mate, thus aligning the ball in position with the hitch. The last thing that needs to be added to the assembly is a nut to hold the ball in place. By going into toolbox, you can find a nut and drag it into the assembly. By dragging it onto a cylinder, it will automatically size and mate. However, if you would like to change the size, you can do so in the pop-up here. When you found the correct size, you can hit the check mark and the nut will be placed.